What should we call over for this? Fair question. There it is. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Mike. <laughs> we are the Brothers Merc. We did keep that cold open, yeah. Now, we're talking about games that don't miss, yes. but that intro did. Did Okay, miss. that's called... Cause and effect, that's called uh, di you know showing differences, contrasting yeah. ideals. We're here to talk about board games that in our experience, yes. every time we play them with anyone, any groups across various regions, these games always go over yeah. huge. They just are so enjoyable. They are, you know. Yeah. Now, every list ever made is subjective. This one is particularly subjective because this is just our personal experience. These games have never, ever missed. They seem to hit every single time. And you might be like, I tried that with multiple game groups and it sucked every single time. Let us know down in the comments. Let yeah. us know where we're wrong. Let us know what games you haven't missed with. This exactly. is just for us. But here's the thing. If you played this game, you show this to a person and they didn't like it, you and or them are wrong. That is true. Okay, is what so we're really just know at. that that's your fault and your friends who yeah. should probably change up to get, get better, better friends. friends. Yeah. Uh, but no, these are for real uh, games that uh, just seem to have just hit. to make just good hit, memories to, to really uh, yeah. grab people quickly. So let's hop right in. Real quick before I do, over on our Patreon, we have a whole nother list of other games that we think don't miss. So make sure to check that out over there too. You know what doesn't miss? The Brothers Murph. That's debatable. But you know what you should do? Subscribe. Look at that not missing. Didn't miss even once. Subscribe, you butts. So number 10 is a game called Cacao. Now, yeah. it's important we put Cacao or specifically a Phil Walker Harding game, who mm. we refer to as Praise B. Praise B. Because there's a, 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 a mantra we go yeah. by in life. It's called Praise B. Don't miss. Praise B doesn't miss. Praise B don't miss. Yeah. Uh, and so therefore, uh, his games also never miss with anybody because Praise B fact. don't miss. Yeah. That's a fact. So, so we had to have a Phil Walker Harding game on here. Had to have a Phil Walker Harding game. And I honestly um, think the one that is the most... Just it just works all the time is cacao. Yep. Uh, cacao is really really great. I I will say caveat this. I don't know how available cacao is now, but it is on BJ. So check it out. Play there. it on Board Game Arena. Cacao is great. He has a whole bunch of games that seem to go over great with everyone. But yep. cacao is just so simple and and unique that it just it really really works. Yeah. Uh, cacao is a game where you are uh, getting cacao fruit and you're selling it. You're trying to have the most money. Um, and it's got this cool thing where there are these jungle tiles on the board. You have all these four sided tiles. And these jungle tiles are going to have some kind of action on them. They're going to have like a market where you can sell, sell cacao. They're going to have like farms where you can grow cacao and get it. There's like a river thing where you can like move up the river, things like that. Yeah. And then you have your own personal like worker tiles. Yes. So you are, we're ultimately collectively building uh, a checkerboard pattern yes. of tiles. Between like jungle, worker tiles. It's jungle, always, jungle, always going to alternate between yeah. them. And your worker tiles are going to have four workers amongst the four sides. And the distribution will be different. It'll only be one on all four sides, uh, two on one side and then two other sides with one blank, or three on one side, one another, and two blanks. And how you arrange them and place them is going to be what controls what you activate and how many times. So if I put a tile next to a you know cacao field that produces one cacao and I have two workers adjacent to that tile sharing a side, yep. I'm going to do that action two times. Yep. And so two times one, I'll get two cacao yep. uh, to put onto my board. Uh, similarly, if you go to a market and you have the amount of workers, you can sell that for those amount of time. So what's really interesting with this is I'm going to place a tile and I might have workers on sides that are just pointing to nothing yet. There's They're no the tiles. Yeah. There's no tiles adjacent to them yet. But as the game goes, you will be, uh, you'll have to fill in with jungle tiles. Basically, if there's ever two spots uh, with worker tiles, no jungle tile present, you must fill that spot in. So there's this is kind of like delayed action system where I might have, you know, a tile strategically placed and then later on, uh, you know, even on your turn, mm -hmm. you put in a jungle tile here, and now I have a worker that's lined up, and even if it's not my, I'm not the active player, yeah. I get to take those actions to the second a tile goes and fills in its place. So there's a really interesting thing that we don't see many times in games with that, where I'm not only taking actions now, I'm, you know, setting myself up potentially for the future. Where these jungle tiles get placed, you want to try to place your uh, workers in such a way that now the jungle tile has to go down and, oh, my tile's about to activate, but on this edge of Nick's tile, there's no workers present. So if I put it down here, you don't activate anything. Yeah. So there's a little bit of ways to kind of box people out, a little bit of, mm -hmm. you know, you can be a little tactical. Yeah. 
with this game. But um, it's so simple. It's all simple things. It's just so simple. Like, gain some stuff, sell some stuff yeah. for coins. There's temples, which is just a little the most area workers control, around yeah. it. So there's a little bit of like area influence stuff. Yeah, it's just dead simple, yeah. but it's got that really cool checkerboard thing, which again, you just don't really see in Tau. No. It's literally the only game I can think of that has that. Yeah. And so because of that, it's just it just goes over so well. There's a lot, you can throw like Baron Park, Sushi Go, a lot of games of Phil Walker Hardings that um, that you can do because Praise B is the best. He doesn't miss. Praise B. But Kakao just always seems to go well. It just, yeah. I, it's just different, it looks nice, it's just cool, it's simple, it's relaxing, it's fun, it's just great, and praise be, don't miss. Praise be, do not miss, and cacao is a hit. You wanna talk about number nine? No thanks. <laughs> That's <laughs> he the name said of the, the game. name of the game! Do you get it? <laughs> Idiots. The uh, game is called No Sorry, thanks. I was, that was necessary. Sorry. This um, is a another uh, super oh, <laughs> simple. So go ahead, I was just gonna say, no Thanks is a super simple, small, light game, right? But a game that takes a classic thing and yes. twists it, which is something that I think really grabs people. So this is a bidding game where there's always going to be a card on offer, uh, and the cards that you collect are negative points you against you. Them. You do not want cards, uh, especially if it's a fairly high-numbered card. You don't want that because that's, a, you know, if it's 39, that's, that's a lot negative, of negative points. 39 points if yeah. you collect it. You'd rather it. have a two. It'd be better. So uh, what you can do is if you comes around to you and you don't want that card, you can say no thanks and put a chip <laughs> into the pot. And so basically yeah, pay a chip to say, keep this going around. I don't want this. Now, you might run into a point where eventually someone doesn't have any more chips or they're just tired of paying money and they say, okay, I'll take the card. When you take the card, you get all the chips that were placed on it. It's kind of a, it's an, a closed economy, yeah. so there's no extra money coming in or out. So now you've collected money from all these other people who have paid. You, of course, have now gotten your money back, including you know a bunch of other chips, which are positive points. Yes. They count against your ultimate yes. score. But now you have this number card, and that's bad. So it's really about like how... How far am I, how much am I willing to pay yeah. to not have to deal with this problem? And that's just an opposite, that's kind of a twist to the opposite thing of normally you're paying money to take something. Yes. Here you're paying money to avoid it, which is such a nice, yeah. interesting twist. And there's a way that you can kind of mitigate, you know, taking some cards and make your life not so bad for you. Yeah, you can, so also on top of that, like getting the card sucks. Getting those chips is a huge deal though, because if you yeah. get a whole stack of them, like say it's a high card, then potentially you could force other people to take cards because yeah. you're like, I have chips. They keep, might run out of chips. Keep bidding no thanks. And so yeah. you can do that. But then on top of that, if you get sequential cards, so let's say you have 39, which is real bad. If you get 38, it covers up the 39, and now that's only 38. Yeah, so, so it doesn't you, add together. It doesn't add together. And so it's one of the things where you're like, I'm willing to take this 38 because this actually makes my situation better. And you might even be like, no thanks, and actually try to like drive yeah. up the bid because like I know I'll eventually take that. And then sometimes someone takes it anyway, you're like, Man, dang yeah. it, I really wish I got that. Well, what's fun is like, as you collect your cards and stuff, it's on the table, so people know what you're yeah. doing, yeah. but you're like, well, do you want 38 you, Are you points? trying to get 38 points that's right now? That's bad, so there's this kind yeah. of manipulation you can do, and so something that's so simple, like you're either just throwing a chip or taking a card. Yeah, but there's you so can, much stuff going on. It's so much fun and intrigue yeah. that goes around, and that whole push your luck, like, how many times can I get this around the table before just, I take it anyway? It just goes well, because it's something that everyone, again, I'm sure there's someone out there that doesn't, Everyone seems to find really fun. Just that anti-bidding, just like, oh gosh. And that, yeah. that constant decision space of like, how much is too much? You're like, sure. ooh, there's like 10 chips out there. Is this worth yeah. taking this 20? At that point, it's only 10, kinda. Yeah. It's really good. And like, really, this list could be full of games. We, we try to make this list pretty diverse yeah. um, in terms of the types of games there. But like, a lot of these kinds of simple card games, bidding Party games, games are you know. very, very like, we might just do like a, uh, top 10 games you can play with anyone. This is that kind of, would be on that kind of list because yeah. these kinds of games tend to go over well with everyone, which is why they're not gamers alike. Yeah, so, you know. But No Thanks is just so, so, so good. It's a blast. It's number eight. Down at nine, it's number nine. Number eight is a game that we have showed to a lot of people, and it always starts off with a what? How's, what's, what's going on? <laughs> and then you hit this stride where you're like, oh, I get it. It's great. Paint the Roses yeah. is number eight. Yeah, it's it's a tough it's a tough teach, kind of. <laughs> it is, even though it's actually a pretty simple game mechanically yeah. of what you're doing. This is a game where you are trying to fill in the uh, the Red Queen's garden with with uh, rose bushes. Alice in Wonderland. Um, Alice in Wonderland world, and you are trying to stay ahead of the queen who yeah. is trying to hunt you down. And you're doing this by 
uh, basically making guesses uh, as to what everyone has been told by the queen how yeah. the garden must be. Now, there's, they're, they're reflected on these whim cards. Yeah. She's told us all how she wants her garden, but she always like, hey, Mike, I want this part to look like this. But don't tell anybody. Yeah, don't <laughs> That's what be what she did. talking about yeah. it. And she's told everyone different information. Yeah. So there are four shapes of bushes that are the four suits of cards. Yeah. There are four colors of roses. And as if you're the active player, you're going to choose a tile to add to the uh, the garden. And you will put cubes out saying, hey, this makes two matches for me. Yeah. And depending on what whim you have, it could be either a color-to-color -color match. Yep a color-to-color -color or shape-to-shape -shape match, or for the hard cards, it can be any kind of combination. Yeah. So if your card is like purple next to red, Mike puts out a purple one that's next to two red roses. I'll he put would two put cubes two out. matches on it, because I am purple next to two reds. I've made two matches. Yeah, and what's really fun is when I place that tile, if any of my teammates, this is a cooperative game, if it makes a match for any of them as well, they put cubes out. Yeah. Now, of course, we don't say what the cubes mean, but we yeah. say this makes blah, blah, blah matches. So if it was, if it was a purple rose on a club bush, and my, my card is club to red, yeah. I'd be like, oh, that's two matches for me. Yeah. People are like, wait, why? You yeah. know, yeah. And, and it could even be that we have the same it could, you know, thing yeah. that we don't know. So the way you stay ahead of the queen is that you have to make at least one guess <laughs> every turn of one player at the table's whim card, whether or not it's the active player. It doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to yeah. guess mine just because no. I placed a tile, although probably you're gonna get some good information. And if you Hopefully. guess correctly, basically everyone confers at the table. Obviously, I can't tell you if you're on the right track or not if you're talking about my card. Uh, but if you guess correctly, you reveal the card, you'll move your little gardener around the board uh, a certain amount of spaces based on what's listed on that yeah. card. And the harder cards will move you further, but of course, of course they're harder to guess, easier cards move you less. Um, every turn, at the end of your turn, the queen is also gonna move forward. And if you are wrong, not only do you not see what the whim card is, but the queen is immediately going to end the turn and move twice as fast as normal. Yeah, she's going double time. And this is what's so fun about the game is that you are, you know, kind of strategically getting information, trying to choose how and when to, you know, make your guesses and move forward. Uh, you know, do I want to guess two cards at once because we feel pretty confident about both cards or right. do I save one for next turn because then we know we sort of have one for next turn. Mm -hmm. And then as you go through the game, the queen is going to continually speed up. Yes. You'll hit these certain marker points where the white rabbit is and the queen basically, you know, increases their speed by one space. Yeah. So you really have to stay... Yeah. You cannot do easy cards the whole time. No. You will, you, not, you will not be able to stay ahead of the queen. You have to start doing medium. Yeah. And realistically, you have to start doing hard Yeah. Uh, to stay ahead. It's very <sighs> difficult to stay ahead of the queen because again, when she gets to the point where she's moving four and then you get something wrong, even if you're 10 spaces ahead of her, she then moves eight. And yeah. you're like, oh, now we're, we're screwed unless we are perfect the rest of the game. Yeah. It's very difficult and it's so much fun. Yeah. But just like that deduction goes over, deduction's not gonna hit with every single person, but this one is nice because it's cooperative. Yeah. And I feel like cooperative deduction is a really good way to kind of ease into deduction. It's kind of what got us into yes, deduction. I hated this deduction up really until this for you. game. Yeah. yeah. Because in deduction game, it's easy to feel stupid. It's easy to feel like all these other people, like everyone gets it but me. Everyone you know? figured it out before me. I'm dumb. It's easy to feel that way. But this, because everyone's talking and everyone's working together, it's, it kind of, it has some aloe for those I feel dumb burns, which I very much feel. One of the reasons why I don't like like escape room games is because I'm not very good at riddles. I'm not very good at figuring out things like that. And so sure. I feel really stupid when I play them. And I don't like feeling that way. Deduction games used to make me feel the same way, but now, that I was able to play a cooperative one and kind of get how to actually get the way to start thinking about things. Now, I, deduction games are some of my favorite games on the planet. It's one, yeah. one of my favorite mechanics. It's up there in top three, probably. Um, and so this one really works well. And then the cool thing about Paint the Roses is as you play it more, because a lot of times you'll play it and then like reset it and play it, reset it. You then start to get into all this like meta where you're like, there's five tiles you can choose from. So you're like, oh, it's probably this. Then you get the whole like, well, if it's that, then why did they choose that tile? There's yeah. like all these other what places. What tile didn't you select? And what information is that? You There's know? all this information and all these different places that you can kind of glean from. And you don't really see that right away. It's just really, really fun. Yeah. Uh, I, I think as far as deduction goes, this one really doesn't miss because it's just, it's clever, it's interesting, it's cooperative. Do I take the information that I know or... Do I see what's on the other side? Do I, do I flip that coin a little bit? Uh, that is always an interesting decision. Always. And this is... Captain Flip. Captain Flip. Sorry. No, you're good. No, uh, it's not okay. No, you're good. You flipped it, and that's good. <laughs> this is Captain Flip. This is a game... Captain uh, Flip is so good. <laughs> ...where you are placing tiles out onto a pirate ship, and the tiles are different crew members. Yeah. Uh, and you are trying to get as much money as possible. 
And they're all gonna have different ways. They might give you instant money. They might have some end game stuff. Depends on the tile, but every time it's your turn, you're gonna take one tile out of the bag. You're gonna look at the crew member on that, mm. and you are gonna decide whether or not you're gonna place that crew member, or are you gonna flip the tile over, which will always have a different type of crew member on the other side. Yep. Uh, and once you flip it, you can't flip back. So yep. do I take what I know I have in hand, or do I flip it over, see what's on the other side, yeah. for better or worse, and then I have to place that tile. And again, we've talked about in this list already, simple concepts with one twist yep. are yep. always, the, again, for us and our experience, the people we play with always create a big, ex yeah. fun experience. Yeah. Uh, the idea that you have something that you know, and there's something on the other side, <laughs> that and that, could be better. the mystery of that yeah. will never not be interesting. No. It will never not be interesting. Yeah. You can pull the same tile a hundred times, and and you'll never remember yeah. that it's that particular tile with that particular yeah. other side. Because there's it. like fifty tiles in the game, yeah. and so it's like it's never like, oh, I know it's on the back side of this one. You no. don't. And if you did remember that, you are Rain Man because yeah. it's like there's <laughs> no way you can remember it. Because again, there's like there's swabbies, and there's like I don't know, fifteen swabbies in the thing, and on the back of those could different. be any number yeah. of things. So it's like every single time you're like. <sighs> that decision every single time is interesting. Yeah. Every single time you play the game, it's just interesting because every single turn you're like, do I take this or do I flip it? You flip it and you're like, nah, flip oh, it. I should have yeah, flipped that. I shouldn't have taken it. Take yeah. it. And, and there's ways to kind of manipulate. You can start, sometimes flip things back and stuff like that. There's a couple different maps like pirate ships. You can, well, not, yeah. not all pirate ships that you can like build on. That makes it a little bit interesting. But even with the one map, it's just like, it's just every single time, it's an interesting decision space of do I take the information do I know or do I roll the dice and flip it over? Yep. And it's always interesting. And because this game is so simple and it has that really juicy decision space, it just goes over well. Yeah. It's quick, it's easy, it, it's got like nice art, it looks nice, and it's just a fun concept. Do I take what I know or do I roll the dice? That's always interesting. And so it seems to always go well. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 been such a hit. It's I like how light and easy it is to get yeah. into. Um, you can explain this game very quickly and then get right to having fun. And I really think that's, the, you know, um, for having a game that's gonna have a kind of a mass appeal to lots of different people, that's one of the keys. Like, you have to be able to get into this game quickly. And not everything we're gonna talk about is a super light game, but it really helps. It really yeah. helps, you know, if I can get to the fun as quick as possible, yeah. Uh, it's probably going to create that lasting yeah. memory and, and, and yeah. you know, you're not going to remember all being bogged down by rules. You're going to remember the fun stuff, the, the flipping of those tiles. So Captain Flip is one that we've really been obsessed with since we uh, played it, you know, not that long ago, really. Uh, and uh, we got a lot more in the future that I'm sure we're going to play. Our next one is going to be a game, a bigger game, and this is going to be Rococo. Rococo... Yeah. Again, for some reason, and again, this is this is one of those, some of the bigger games particularly are, are gonna be more circumstantial to us and subjective sure. to us. But it's like, we both have taught Rococo to a whole bunch of different people, and every single time we, we play this game, we teach this game, it seems to go over insanely well. Yeah. Rococo is a game where you are garment makers um, in like kind of old-timey times, and you are making beautiful suits and beautiful dresses, um, and then you are selling them to people, um, and then they're going to go to the King's Ball. And basically, in the King's Ball, there's all these different rooms, and you want your garments in those rooms, a little bit of area control there. And because they're like, oh, who you're wearing? I'm wearing a Mike Murphy. They're like, that is crap, I'm wearing a Nick Murphy, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> so different. So different. Yeah. Um, and so that's basically what you're doing in the game. It's got a little bit of deck building where you're the actions that you're taking, you're gonna be playing a card. Yep. That's what your action, you can gain new cards, uh, but it's just a little bit of it. But this is one of those games that's kind of got a little bit of everything. There's like a little bit of um, area control. There's like a little bit of deck build. There's a little bit of resource management, a little bit of this. But it just comes together in this really great way. It's got an interesting theme that is very different. Um, and I don't know, there's just something really satisfying about this game, about getting the stuff, putting, making it into garments, and then putting it on people and having them go out to the ball. It's just really, really cool. And again, this is one of those ones where it's like, I can't really state why it always seems to go well, but it just always seems to go really, really well. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's that kind of, you know, uh part of what made Wingspan hit so hard is that like it's a unique theme. It's something that, you know, certainly at the time that it came out, yeah, you didn't really then. see a lot of yeah. games like that. Um, you know, it looks nice, even the old version, which is what we have. Now there's a new version with Eno Tool Art that's Bonkers, like unreal yeah. beautiful. It's insane. It's so nice. Um, and yeah, I think I think there's something to be said for games that just do a different kind of thing. It's doing similar stuff, like you said, resource management, you're managing your money, but uh, you know, seeing something like area influence control stuff that isn't 
battle based is, yeah. is cool. Like it's, I think that's what's fun. It's like, oh, I'm getting these kind of familiar things in an unfamiliar way. Like we've talked about a lot of these things for us are games that provide a twist. And the setting here is the kind of, uh, you know, something that's a little a little bit different. Yeah. And I think it's one that, you know, everyone can get behind the idea of kind of like a masquerade, yeah. you know, and a fancy party and there's fireworks and you're kind of trying to sponsor as many elements of this party as possible. Yeah. Um, I just think is, is cool. And it's a game that like for having some of those you know, more midweight Euro mm -hmm. mechanisms and stuff, it's pretty breezy. Like, it's yeah. it's pretty easy to get into. So yeah. that's been another thing that I think has been nice is that, like, it's not the hardest thing to teach. It's not the hardest thing to play. Yeah, it's pretty intuitive in terms of what you're doing. Pretty intuitive. Yeah. Uh, the actions are straightforward and stuff. So it has a lot. It's just kind of a great blend of things. And yeah. I think it, it uses an interesting yeah. theme. And this is, like, one of those games that, like, I feel like, doesn't do anything new, but does the things it yep. does really well. Yep. And again, it's not it's not an necessarily an all time game. You know, I don't know where it is like the BGG top one hundred or whatever. It's not in there. We both really like it, but it's not in our like top tens or anything like that. But it's just it's just takes solid mechanics and does them very well. And it's yeah. like and, and that goes over well with people, right? Yeah. It's like it's probably not going to be anyone's favorite game. But pretty much everyone seems to like it, yeah. you know? And there's definitely validity in that. And just being like, I'm trying to make a game that's appealing to a lot of different people. And I think Rococo is that, honestly. Yeah. I think it's kind of like the definition of like solid Yeah, game. it's just, just solid. absolutely rock solid foundationally. Yeah. And I think that's pretty important in, you know, deciding what to play. I think we'll get pushed back on this one. Yeah? I think, some, think so? I think this game misses with some people, but it never misses with us. And that's Quacks of Quidlinburg. Quacks of Quidlinburg, all right? Now listen. This, of course, uh, this is a push your luck game. Yes. Things like push your luck are not always going to be everyone's cup of tea. No. But this game, when it first came out, our, our good friend Dave Luza brought it over from Germany. It wasn't even out in the States mm. yet. Brought it over from Germany to uh, a Dice Tower con. This has got to be oh, 2018, probably, right? It was, it was Dice Tower East. So we haven't, been, we haven't been to Dice Tower East. Whatever in a long year Quacks first came out. Uh, yeah. I think 2018. That's what feels uh, like. And I, my. Memory, yeah, of playing this was like Dave teaching it's us a, translating the, the yeah. event cards and stuff because of course we don't speak German, uh, and playing this push your luck game where you're pulling out these chits out of a bag and you're putting it into this cauldron as you're making some strange brew, trying not to blow up, and it was so impactful. You know, the, just the gameplay. I was like, this is you know at the time I had never played something quite like that before. I was like, this is so insanely fun. And then we got our copy, you know, shortly after when it hit the States. And we had this experience of showing Quacks of Quidlinburg to really a ton of people over yeah. the years. Yeah. And I got to see other people have that first experience that I had where they're like, whoa, this is so fun. And we have the upgraded bits and stuff like that. And it's just one that we've created so many fun memories with. Yeah. Um, it really... We've never had a boring game of this, yeah, and then, ever. And that's why we talk about this list being very subjective, because it's like, for us, this game has never missed. Yeah. I am sure some other people are like, this game misses hard. And we're like, sure. for us, it doesn't. So you know what? Yeah. It's making the list, because this is this is one of those games that I, I when I think of like this, like, what's a game that doesn't miss? Quacks and Quillenberg is usually like, First or second in my mind, because again, we've yeah. shown it to so many people and it always seems to go so, so because well. Because there's highs and lows. Yeah. There's like the whole, again, the Captain Flip thing, like do I pull one more chit out of this bag yeah. knowing that I could blow yeah. up and lose all my progress? Or do I play it safe, you know? And it's just fun. It's a game that isn't punishing, like isn't too punishing, I should say. So like if you do blow up your cauldron, it's not the end of the world. It's not ideal, yeah. but it's, <laughs> it's not, not the ideal. end of the world. And I think that's really smart yeah. for a game because then I'm enjoying the pushing your luck. I enjoy when it blows up in my yeah. face. I'm like, man, that's awesome. You know, yeah. because like I chose Whatever. to do this. Like yeah. I, I'm the one who made that decision. That's the fun. The risk is fun. That's the, the risk point. is yeah. fun. And I really think that it's a trick that, you know, a neat trick that, that Wolf Game Worse pulled, pulled off with like making a game that you really enjoy that roller coaster ride. You enjoy yeah. the highs, you enjoy the lows. That's not always easy to do. No. And and this is one that, again, provides plenty in the base box because there's all these powers from the chips, there's alternate versions of the powers, yeah. so there's tons to explore. And we've just have literally had so many great experiences yeah. playing this game. For us, it doesn't miss. I don't know about y'all, but for us, it doesn't miss. If Tell you, us we're wrong. You can be wrong. Tell us we're wrong yeah. in the comments and then realize you're looking into a mirror because you're wrong. <laughs> 
This is another one I think we're going to push back on. But again, for us, it, every single time, Lost Ruins of Arnak goes over great. Yeah. It really does. I don't know every how much push-up we're going to get. This is like a top 100 game, but, like, you know. Be, but here's the thing. Because of that, some people hate it. You know what I mean? <laughs> probably. This is, again, one of those this games. This is the heaviest game on our list. Uh, yeah, probably. at this. Right. Yeah, this in Rococo. But I would say this is kind of in the Rococo thing where it doesn't do anything new, which no. games don't need to do anything new. Um, it takes stuff that already exists, but does it, in our opinion at least, very, very solidly. Yeah. Um, and, and I really love Lost Ruins of Arnak. This is a game where there's a, a bit of worker placement, a bit of deck building. Kind of like you're moving up. Heavy you're, resource management. Heavy resource management. Really, you are That's not even just thing. like you are managing your resources. It's not so much. A lot of times, resource management means you're just getting stuff, spending stuff. No, no this one, you are like, I'm going to turn this into this. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. But you're it's doing your. It's all about how you manipulate yeah. and convert your resources. You're like that scene in CSI where they're both typing on a computer yeah. to like fight the <laughs> hacker, you know? That's how computers work. Oh, you love the 90s or the 2000s, whatever that was. Um, the internet. Um, and so. Uh, but Lost Ruins just goes over well, and I think that's yeah. one of the main reasons, because it's just about those solid mechanics done really, really well, and it's just, I don't know, again, this is one of those games where, like, again, you're just, you're exploring, there's discovery, there's resource management, you're trying to stretch out your round as long as possible, trying to turn stuff into other stuff to keep going in the round, keep going in the round, and it just is satisfying, and it works really well, and at least yeah. for us, every single time we've showed it to someone, every single time we've done it, it just has gone insanely well yeah. every single time. I think there's a lot of like ways to go about playing your game. You know, you're ultimately feeding stuff into moving up these resource, uh, these uh, the research, research track, tracks, yeah. uh, because that's the whole thing that we're doing is that we are, you know, researching the area, learning about the past and stuff, and kind of sending our research back. But there's all sorts of things you can do. You can like try to get compasses and discover dig sites. Uh, overcome guardians, uh, collect a bunch of different item and, and artifact cards and be able to make use of the special powers on those and those are all worth points. There's a lot of fun things to do and one thing I enjoy is no matter how many times we play this game, it's always this kind of like beautiful canvas in front of you to play with. Yeah. You know, you're in the sandbox and you're, you're kind of, oh, maybe I'll do this right here or oh, the, oh, Nick discovered that dig site. Now that gives me this option to get these arrowheads. If I get that over mm -hmm. here, then I can take this and move up this spot to give me this bonus action or whatever it might be. Yeah. And it's always just slightly shifting and changing um, from game to game. And I just think like it just keeps the replayability high. Of course, they've come out with uh, you know various expansions. There's another one coming. Uh, you know, now there's uh, individual player uh, powers and yeah. things which really beef stuff up even more. Long, again, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, this is a game that, again, doesn't do anything new. The expansions are like what you would think an expansion would be. Yep. It's like, oh, it's a deck builder game? Variable okay, player powers. Now variable player powers, everyone has their own deck. It's like, always it's, a great idea. It's all just like very standard stuff in yeah. this game. But again, it's executed really well. It's though. executed well, which again, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can take a wheel that's really good and just make it cooler. And it's yeah. just like that is totally a valid way this to This is make like games. the spinner rims of board games, yes. right? Not new. God, what happened to those? Well, they were dumb. They got we got rid yeah, of them. Yeah, but finally. I liked them. They were cool. They were just they the were worst. so dumb. Remember spinny rims? They were they great. Were just, oh, what a time! <laughs> Early two thousands was great. Were literally so weird, <laughs> so weird. Everyone's wearing shirts out to here. Whatever. It's great. It doesn't matter. The point is, Lost Ruins is great. That's what we're saying. When we say spinning rims, we mean it like what spinning rims should have been. Yeah. We're in straight banger territory. Yeah, now. right now we're in banger territory. A game that we've showed to many, many, many people, yeah. and it has gone, not even gone over great, it's gone over insanely well every single time is Nana or Trio. Yeah. Trio is the one you can get here in the States. Nana is the ja the original Japanese version, which yeah. is, in my opinion, the better version, but they're the exact same game, so same Trio is just fine. This is it just, just a memory game. It it's, just works, It's man. just a simple memory game, and, like, it, it like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always <laughs> baffled a little bit because I'm like, this shouldn't it be shouldn't as work. fun as yeah, it is. It should not work as well. It's as just it a memory game. So this is a game where you're going to have a hand of cards, uh, and there are numbers, depending on your player count, one through 12. Yeah. Uh, and there's three of each, three copies of every number. Uh, your goal is to try to find all three copies of a number, a number to collect a set. So it's almost kind of like go fish-ish in that way, and you want to collect three sets to win. There are ways to break that and stuff. But you have a hand of cards that's going to be arranged from low to high. Uh, and of course, you don't know what anyone else has. And on your turn, you can ask somebody to reveal their highest card or their lowest card. That's it. You can't ask for a specific number or anything like that, but you're like, hey, Nick, what's your highest card? He throws down a 10. Okay. 
that's the highest card you have. I can ask myself that, same thing, lowest or highest card. Maybe I have a 10, so I'll be like, Mike, what's your lowest card? Oh, I have a 10. Hey, uh, Jamie over there, what is your highest card? If Jamie has a 10, I now have succeeded in my challenge. I've gotten all three of the numbers and I get to collect it. If I ever miss, Nick reveals a 10, Jamie has uh, a 12 is their highest card. Okay, I have failed in that. Everyone collects their cards who revealed. Uh, and now we all have some more information. Now we all got some so now it's like, okay, now we all know that. And I'm sitting on two 12s and I'm like, oh, there's the other 12 right there. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so you're learning information yeah. and using what you know you have in your hand. There's also some cards in the table and you can reveal a card yeah. uh, from the table uh, to you know help make your, your matches and stuff. But that's really all it is. And that's there's just something it. so fun about yeah. the kind of how casual the game is uh, and the, the memory element and that whole, like you said, when you have the money, it's like, I know where the 12s are. I know where it is. You yeah, know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, and that's always really, yeah. really fun. But you have those kind of parameters: lowest card, highest card. And if someone like if you say lowest card, someone goes, "Oh, they throw it on a six. You're, you're like, like, "That's your lowest like, card." Jeez, what's in your hand? You know, I'm like, that yeah. could be. It creates moments like that where you're like, "What?" You know, yeah. and it's just, it's really, really fun. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's gamers go fish, and that sounds like a sentence that's ridiculous and shouldn't work, but it just does. It's just fun because everyone forgets. You're like, oh gosh, where was this one? Was yeah. it over here? And then like, especially if it's on the table in the middle, you're like, which card? There's was so that again? often those aha moments where you're like, oh, I now know where everything is. Has anyone? But it's like three turns till meet. Will anyone figure it out before I do? Right. There's so Charlie much of that Lowe. tension. It's just, it's just silly fun. But it just, it, uh, this is again, again, could have been number one realistically. Like it just has gone over so, so. So well. There's actually a Christmas edition, which kind of throws another wrench in the gear, which is really cool. Yeah. But again, Nana, Trio, whichever one you can get, they're so outstanding. And it, I mean, it just goes, it's one of those small box card games that goes over well with everyone. It's just, Cascadia's is nice. Cascadia is so great, dude. You, I, you played a lot of Cascadia I, recently. I did. So uh, <laughs> Cascadia is our number two. Yeah. Um, it's it's just, it goes over well. This is a Speaking game. Speaking winners, Tend to be tend pretty to, yeah. universal. It's not, that's not like, <laughs> yeah, breaking news. Like, yeah. this is a good game. Like, yeah, I expect it would be. And especially if it's Spiel Yaris winner, which is like really kind of family, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. pointed. Uh, Cascadia is a tile laying game that I have played a bunch recently because our buddy Dave Luzo, we mentioned before uh, via Quacks at Quinlanburg, uh, was competing in the World Series of Board Gaming uh, in Cascadia, among other games. And so I was, I was. You know, I was getting in, getting my shots in yeah. against Dave to see if I could beat win? him. I couldn't, but I did do well against him. Yeah. And he was talking about ways to break the, like, not break the game, but, like, ways to think about stuff, which was fascinating. This is a tile laying game where you are going to have four sets of tiles paired with an animal token. And you can choose one of those sets on your turn and add it to your kind of growing display of tiles. Uh, and the tiles are going to have different types of land on them and then one or more animal symbols on them. And your animal token that you collect on your with your tile can go anywhere on any of the tiles you place as long as it shows that animal. So yep. if it's salmon, it has to have a salmon icon on the tile to be able to place it down. And these animals you want to collect in different ways. Salmons want to be kind of in a run, uh, all connected. Hawks might want to be uh, within line of sight of each other, but not next to each other. Bears might want to be in little groups and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, and so you are trying to build out kind of a really harmonious landscape of uh, hopefully matching land types, because those yeah. would be worth points uh, at the end of the game. And then those animals being arranged in ways that they it makes them all kind of happy and stuff. I think this game is... We love flat out games so much, yes. and they have this kind of series of games. Calico so does as well. Miss. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, flat out, <laughs> flat out crushing it. Yeah. Frankly, um, Cascadia is so cool because like it takes eighty seconds to teach it. Yeah, it's you're like, hey, simple. here's these tiles. You can take one paired set, put it down anywhere, put your token anywhere that shows that animal. Done. That's Boom. the turn structure. Very quick. Now people discovering the strategy of like how and where and why they might want to play something can can get deep and you can really get into that. And that's what's really cool is that there's a lot to explore, but on a base level of like how a turn works, it's so easy to get into. And yeah. I think the, the ease of entry, the best civil art, the kind of cozy Pacific Northwest vibes, it is just something that is so nice with like a cup of tea after yeah. dinner. You know, and you're just playing it in the evening and kind of winding down. It's puzzly enough to give your brain something yeah. that, you know, tickles your brain, but it's not stressful. 
Um, I don't know. You go on. I'm, I'm, I'm yammering on about it. But no, I, 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 I was enjoying listening. It was I great. I played like three or four games the other night. And, yeah. and just base game, Cascadia, and I was like, man, this game is so great. Yeah. Like, that's it's just those, still so enjoyable to play. That's one of those games where, like, I don't play it very often, but every time I do it, I go, oh, yeah, that's right. That's why this game was, like, a huge success. That's why yeah. this game won the Spiel's Yards. That's why. Because you're just like, it's just so, it just works. It's just so simple. It's so elegant. It's just it really just appealing. It works well. Again, the best yeah. solo art. It's, like, beautiful. It's just nice. And, and, it, and because of that, it goes over really well. It's, like, unless you're like, I hate Salmon. Um, I won't play this game. You're dislike like, Elk a lot. You're like, that's fair. That's weird, um, man. Salmon seem like douchebags. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, it, I don't know. It's just, it just goes over really well. Mike said everything good. I was, I was, I was like, you were just waxing poetic and I was here for it. Um, yeah. Yeah, Cascadia is insanely good. Here's the like, Filling in voids is fun. It's just, it, it tickles a part of your brain. Bringing order. Yeah, it's like, it's just, it's one of the reasons why Tetris is so popular, and this is kind of a Tetris E kind of game, and this would be Project L. Yep. Project L goes over well with everyone, at least everyone I've ever met. Should and I have Project met you, well. Frank, and that's why you don't like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, Project L is, is so good. It's a kind of a, it's your, you're filling little voids. You basically are going to get these cards. These cards are these kind of like dual layer cards, puzzle which is nice. Puzzle cards, kind of. These little puzzle cards, and they're basically going to have a big empty space in the middle. That's kind of like a big blob of a shape, kind of a still geometric kind of squarish looking shape. And then throughout the game, you're going to be getting these very nice acrylic tiles that are going to be some of the Tetris pieces, like the Tetris L. Some are just like little individual one squares. And then basically you can get, gather these tiles and then you can fill in this void and you complete that card once you fill in the whole space in the middle. So because there's all these different shapes, you can fill in those spaces in a lot of different ways, of course. So it's just kind of like, okay, I'll put the square one here, I'll put the L over here and, stuff, and it's just like, that's all you're doing. When you complete a card, you can get a new card, which again is a different void shape. And then you get to keep the things that you have. And so you kind of get this growing pile of like pieces. Yep. And that's what you're doing. You're gaining pieces. You're trying to fill in these cards, and that's it. There's no theme. They don't even try and slap a theme on there. The theme is just acrylic shapes. shapes. The, shapes. It's just it's just shapes. That's literally all it is. They don't try to do anything else with it, but it's just satisfying because it's an inherent thing. You see this empty space, and you see these pieces, and your brain goes, I want to fill that in. Yeah. I need to fill that in. I have to take these spaces. <laughs> and but, I mean, God, seriously, like, It'd be a social experiment, like just in a table somewhere, just put a table somewhere like in a mall and have something like... Some of those and some, some pieces. And then people, no and people would just start being like... They would just It's an inherent thing. You need to start true. doing it. I think that's true. And so making a game around that that visceral need <laughs> is really satisfying. It just makes me like, hell yeah, I filled I feel that in. Great. Oh, there's another one? Great, I'm going to fill this one in too. There's something very appealing about like order out of chaos. Yeah, it's just nice. And then again, like the it's just like, it's this very stark black and white game, but the colors are these very vibrant, like acrylic pieces, very click clacky, mm, very nice. Delicious. Every single part of this game is just satisfying. And because it's that satisfying nature, it goes over well with everyone. Yep. And it's just, I love showing, this is, in my opinion, at this point, this is my favorite gateway game to like show new people, like completely yep. new people, because it's very, very simple. It's something they inherently understand. Fill this in with those shapes. They go, okay, I get that. Yeah. I understand how that works. It's, I don't know, an arm wax play. It's just so good. Yeah, I completely agree with I just, I, I, I can't. I can't speak highly enough about Project L. I think it's the way the game the, ramps a up. perfect game for teaching new people into Agreed. like board games. Being like, hey, board games are not Monopoly. It can be this. Yeah. You what know? a cool thing to show yeah. that's just so different than something like a Monopoly could be. Uh, and there's something that's just great about the cadence of the game where you complete a puzzle, get those pieces back, maybe a new piece, ooh, that's cool. Oh, I can upgrade this piece. There's just a lot of, it just has a, a really good flow to it as it kind of ramps up to doing those bigger puzzles that are worth points and stuff like that. Absolutely amazing game. And that is our list, everybody. At get least records. as of now. If you yeah. want more of this deliciousness, go to our Patreon right now, become a member if you aren't, and watch us talk about more games that we think are really just a, a guaranteed good time. Uh, you can see, speaking of, our patrons rolling yes, down indeed. here. So another thing you get besides uh, first looks of games, uh, kind of first impressions, uh, you know, some extra unboxings, behind the scenes stuff, best of the weeks that we've been playing, all that jazz, yeah. and get your name up on this list. And down in the comments, patron. again, let us know what games do you think that don't yeah. miss. Again, it could be like, hey, 
I know a lot of people don't like this game, but for me, it's never missed. We have a couple of those on our list. We're like, I know yeah. some people don't like this game, but like for us, it always slaps. And so it's just like, let us know down in the comments below. Let us know where we're yeah. wrong. I don't what know. Are, what are your picks? Yeah for uh, those games. Don't just say we're wrong. If we're wrong, prove evidence. Show some receipts for yourself. What do you like? Yeah, really, though. That really seems to hit with everybody because, of course, it's going to be different for everyone. So let's make a big old list of recommendations for people yeah. in the comments below. Please thumb this video up. If you like what you see, please subscribe. We'd love that. Uh, that never misses with us. And uh, we'll catch you all in the next Top 10. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for watching that hot top 10. Got a big shout out to our channel sponsors, Restoration Games, Borg and Geek, Garfield Games, and Artig Table. Big shout out to Kondar, who's sponsoring us for the month of October. Kondar has wings and he can fly. I think. I, is, is Kondar a bird? I feel like Kondar. It's a condor. That's what I'm saying.